quadrilateral MATS has coordinates given by that. Uh, prove quadrilateral NATS is a rhombus. Okay, so um, to prove a quadrilateral is a rhombus, uh, there are a couple of different ways you can approach this. You can show that all four sides having the same length, which is an easy way to go about it. You can also try um, to show that the um, that the diagonals are perpendicular bisectors of one another. Um, I'm actually just going to approach this using um, all four sides are, are congruent, so that is definitely one way. Um, I, I feel if I if I do this quick enough, I'll I'll, I'll try to um, show it in an alternative way. The use of the set of axes below is optional. I'm not going to um, to use a set of uh, axes here, and I'm just going to, uh, to 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 go through it. So NATS, actually, you know what? I changed my mind. I am going to use the axes. So N is negative four, negative three. So negative four, negative three is going to be over here, negative four, negative three. So that's N. And then A is uh, one, two, which is right here. That's A. And T is A comma one. So two, four, six, eight. This is T. And S is 3, negative 4. So 3, negative 4 is right here. Okay, so looking at this, this will allow me to easily just count boxes, right, using Pythagorean theorem. Looking at AT, the length of AT, what is that? That's going to be the square root of... Let's see, go horizontally, I'm moving two. I'm going to draw this in a, another color in red. So I'm going to go over two, four, six, seven, and then down one, right? So what is that? So seven squared plus one, that's going to be the square root of 50. So that's going to be square root of 50. And doing this again, going from um, T to S, I'm going two, four, five, right, five down, and then two, four, five, and five across. So what is that? So that would be square root of 50 again, right? Because uh, five squared plus five squared is 25 plus 25, so that's 50. And looking at this, again, that would be square root of 50, and this would be the square root of 50. So just to write myself a little bit of note to uh, fully drive the point home, NA is equal to AT, which is equal to TS, which is equal to NS, is equal to square root of 50, or 5 square root of 2. So NATS is a rhombus. Alternatively, what you could have also done is you could have found the... Um, the slopes of AT, uh, being that I did this so quickly, I'm going to solve it another way. This is an alternative now, okay? So you could have also done the following. I'm going to use another color. I'm going to draw this in red. Okay? So we can find the midpoint of AT, uh, of, of AS rather, by finding out what the average of those are, right? So, I'm gonna, uh, so it's uh, one plus uh, three divided by two, comma uh, two plus negative four divided by two. So the midpoint happens to be two comma negative one, right? So I want to call this like point E or something, okay? So point E is negative 2 comma 1. And going the other direction, right? So looking at NT and doing the same thing, I can see that uh, this is going to be negative uh, 4 plus 8 uh, divided by 2. And vertically, it's going to be negative 3 plus 1 divided by 2. 
So again, this is 2 comma negative 1. Here, what I'm doing is I'm showing that point E, all right, the midpoint, um, we're, we're bisecting the, uh, the diagonals here. So, eight, so NT and AS share the same midpoint. So NT and AS bisect each other. And the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to find the slope of AS. The slope of AS is, looking at this, is going to be negative 3. The slope of NT is, looking at this, it's going to be 1 third. So because of this, AS and NT uh, are have negative reciprocal slopes therefore so therefore AS is perpendicular to NT. NATS is a rhombus because diagonals are perpendicular bisectors of each other. There you go. So proving it using the diagonals turns out to be a little lengthier than proving all four sides are congruent. But you know, you, um, there are different ways of doing things.